we drew yesterday uh, and it was probably a good point um, to be honest as you can see as an aside like I literally just woke up and decided to record this video so what little hair I have is a mess uh, probably should also shave my beard but yesterday we got a 1-1 one -one draw at Loon um, I think most fans were going in thinking they could win but would have been happy with a draw um, the way the game panned out I think probably can be a little bit disappointed we didn't take the, the three points did have a penalty shout and uh, turned away which I think was probably a penalty on Honeyman it was also hit the bar with Maguire later in the game as well but it was 1-1 but you know, it was, a, it was a good performance, and I think fans uh, can be happy with it, especially the manner of it. We went away from home against a newly promoted side. We've been early in the season, we've, we've seen that rodeo before many a time in the past, and normally we get beat. Yesterday we managed to secure a point. Uh, as for the game itself, well, the goals, I suppose we'll talk a little bit about the game anyway. The, the goals, Madja with the first goal, and to be honest, it's just a really, really good finish. Um, people have been, you know, questioning whether or not he is actually good enough to be leading the line. I think there's he has issues with it. I don't think he's great at holding the ball up. I mean, he's all right at holding the ball up, but he's never going to win the aerial battle. He'll win the chess battle, which I really, really, you know, I, I rate him for that. He's very, very good at winning them, you know, mid-level sort of balls. But the, in the air, he, he's not going to win battles against big centre-backs. Um, but the finish was, was stunning. It was an absolutely brilliant finish. It was, it was a, you know, the way he puts it in the only place that he I probably can't save it it was it was a stunning goal, and I think Madja, you know, deserves credit because he he's taken the game by the the scruff of the neck. He, he's really put his oh, you know put his claim that he can actually be you know leading the line for. And I think Charlie White, uh, Jerome Sinclair, and whoever else was saying you know will have to dislodge him at the minute, and I think that's only fair. As for the the equaliser, um, it was disappointing. Uh, the the whole goal was disappointing. I think um, last night I uh, had a wee rant on Catamol, justified in my opinion. But the goal to blame it all on him would be probably a bit harsh. But in the spirit of the game, when the game finishes and you look back at it, you know, it was his glare and error that did actually lead to the goal. I mean, there was a few errors beforehand, but yeah, I can I can see why fans would blame it. I can certainly see why people like myself were upset with it last night because you know that I'll get on to Catamol properly in a minute, but. It's just weak. He just didn't want the ball as much as the other guy, and that's why he, that's why he scored. So yeah, it was disappointing. It was one one at that point. I think the game, as I say, we hit the bar, and after that, it it petered out. And I think a draw. I think a draw is probably Luton will be happier with the draw uh, on the, the balance of play. But I think you know we've got to take that against a team that's expected to be a promotion contender. It draws. Um, it draws all right. It's a, it's a decent point. Four points from them opening two games, and I'm, I'm happy with that. That's probably what I would have expected. I'm glad that we won the home game just to, to get that monkey off our back straight away. And, you know, they draw away from home. An away point's never. It's never really a bad point, especially against a team who's going to be in and around uh, the promotion spots coming in the air. Uh, the other thing we're going to do today is a central midfield depth chart. Yes, it's a very Americanized word, but I think. Um, I think it's worth doing because I've had I put something up about Catamol yesterday saying that you know he needs to if we're going to change the culture of the club then Catamol needs to go. Most people agreed, a few people didn't agree, but I think I would going to just expand on it a little bit as to why I think that Lee Catamol probably shouldn't be part of this team going forward. Uh, the main point would be is we've got new ownership, new ownership, new manager, new players, new backroom staff. Everything about the club's new, new seats. Everything's fresh and new, and we've got one player. We well, had two, you know. I think John O'Shea and Lee Catamol were the symbols of the old regime. I'm not. I don't mean that in any sort of, you know, they were shit. Blame them for going down. No, I'm. I'm not saying that. What I am saying is, though, is for the fans and for themselves, and for the football club, they represent an era whereby Sunderland went from a Premier League club to a Championship club to a League One club. They played through all of that, and you've got to make changes. You, you, you fundamentally, you can't just keep you know, that them sort of players in there because it's everything, it's a mental game, you know, at the end of the day, it's a human, it's it's a mental thing going from a Premier League player to a Championship player, a League One player in quick succession is going to do things, you know, is going to affect your performance, is going to affect your confidence. And it doesn't matter if Joe Bloggs on the terrace is saying, Catamore, yeah, awful, you're the worst player ever. Even if he doesn't do that, which to be honest, it's something, it doesn't happen that much unless he sprays a 20-yard ball out of play straight away. You know, he doesn't get instantly hammered. 
you, you end up with a situation with Catamore where there's nothing that I think Sunderland could do to turn him round because it's just went too far one way. And, you know, I hope that he finds a new club and I hope that he, he resurrects his career a little bit because, to be honest, for most of his time, yeah, he was a very good player. And I, I hope that, you know, in, in five years' time, if he did get a move this summer, we'll remember him more for the, the Gus Poirier player than what we did for this, you know, player that's been hopeless for the last couple of years. And that that that's essentially it with Catamore. It, it's a case of changing the identity of the football club and to change it fully, to, to fully make it Jack Ross and Stuart Donald's club, you need to get rid of Lee Catamore. That's the top and bottom. That's for the central midfield. Anybody who's saying get rid of Catamore, who we're going to have in you know as central midfield options. Well, I, I've got six here, and I think all of these players offer more at the minute than Lee Catamore does. McGeoch, injury prone. That was the worry. I remember saying on this video or on the podcast that that's the worry. He's, he's injury prone. Max Power looks at you know he's proven at this level. A lot has to be said for being a proven player at this level. In number three, I, I'll probably put in Robson. Uh, he looked good last year in the championship. And he's a ball winner. He's probably the one that will go closest to Catmore in the sense that he'll break up play and win the ball. He, very good in the air as well. He, I would say probably an underrated player for Sunderland. Mumbar in number four. The reason why he goes there is simply age. Can't expect him to play a lot of games. And to be honest, the, these three, four, five and six could have went anywhere. Because Mumbar, 9 and Embleton, for me, it'll be... I hope they'll all get runs in the team, but... I think they are going to be behind the, the big three of McGeoch, Power and Robson, but I could, I could be wrong on that. Then after that, though, you, the, the centre midfield is even deeper than that because you saw on the opening day George Hunman played in there and he played pretty well. You know, we, we managed to turn on that second half and win 2-1 when he played in there. Lyndon Gooch can play in there as well. So the, the centre midfield options is where it's the place we've got the most depth on the park. Therefore makes a player like Catamore this dispendable. Uh, but don't... We fundamentally just don't need him. And you can say what you want about his performances and everything else, but you've got a guy there who in a forty two grand a week of what 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 good is, is that doing for the club at the minute? You know, he's he's earning more than everyone bar Viedo. And as well Viedo he can actually play football still for Sunderland. Whereas Catamore patently just he's a he's a liability when he comes on and it's horrible to see a player that we've all you know watched and liked turn into that, but that's essentially what it is. When he comes on the pitch at the minute, he is, yeah, he, he's a liability, and it's it's mean, it's nasty to say it, and it's I wouldn't want to say it about Lee Catmull. I couldn't imagine his three four years ago saying that, but you know, yesterday he couldn't keep up the pace with a League One team, you know, a team that's came up from League Two. I mean. That, that sort of tells you all you need to know. Now, it'd be a miracle if they can't get rid of him. That's the issue. How are you going to get rid of him? There's reports linking him with Bordeaux today, but I'll see what... I mean, Gus Poyer wants to take him, then, you know, Gus, I'll give you a kiss if I ever see you again. Because that'll be a miraculous bit of business. Um, so, yeah, that, that sort of sums up the central midfield depth. As, as for the thoughts on something at the minute, defensively looked stronger yesterday with Baldwin in there, and now I don't want to... Yeah, I'm, I'm not going to pin that on Oz Turk. It, it would be harsh to do that. I've seen Oz Turk play couple of games and yeah he was poor against Charlton but he, he'll he hopefully he'll bounce back from that. Leuven's looked stronger yesterday uh, whether or not that's playing with Baldwin I don't know but Leuven's, to be honest Leuven's and Oz take look better in the second half against Charlton anyway so it could just be that um, but I think going forward it's likely that we'll see that centre back partnership flourish um, with Leuven's and Baldwin again. Full back areas Oviedo it wasn't great actually yesterday to be honest um, and I could see them again moving him. He had a very good game on the opening day, but cameras were pointing at him, so you never know what sort of impact that has. Matthews, I think he'll just be a sturdy right back. Uh, nothing, nothing too flash, but shouldn't really cost you too much. And yeah, you know the the rest of the team sort of picking itself at the minute because of injuries. Um, I was disappointed yesterday that he brought on Catamore instead of uh, 09, but I don't want to continue um, hammering it at Catamore too much. As for the games coming up, we've got Sheffield Wednesday on Thursday. Hopefully there's uh, a crowd there that's okay because at the minute I think they've sold about 3,000 tickets, which is not great, especially when it's on the telly. I mean, I don't know why they put Sheffield Wednesday on the telly on a Thursday night. And it's a Thursday night. If someone never played at home on a Thursday night, I, I can think of playing away a couple of times in the cup, but never at home. So it's going to be... Oh, it's going to be... Uh, not great. Not great looking on the camera. I look forward to all their mag tweets. Uh, about the empty stadium light. 
Then on Sunday, Scunthorpe, which is a big game, I think that that strands it with one of them where if the if they can beat Scunthorpe, move on to seven points, beat another team that's expected to be in around the, the top six, then I think we can all be pretty pleased with that start seven points. A draw, it's a still, the jury's going to be out uh, a little bit and people will be worried, but get a win and it will hopefully just propel with. Keep, keep that you know keep that engine churning and keep keep up going up that league. Looking at the rest of the league one at the minute, to be honest, the team that's worried the two teams that are worrying me from what I've seen is Barnsley. They they look good. They look like they mean business this year. And Ports eh not Ports, Peterborough. Peterborough look good. Uh they won three one yesterday at Rochdale. Look at the two of them and I'm like, ooh, they they're gonna be the ones that are gonna be pushing um towards the top of the league. So yeah, that's that's pretty much that. Um, we've got a podcast recording today or tomorrow. I don't know when you listen to this. There'll be a podcast recording anyway at some point uh, with Phil Smith from the Sunday Night Go. I'm looking forward to that. And we've also got an idea for doing a live podcast. That'll be, a, well, not live, a video podcast. That's what I mean, a video podcast. We already did a live podcast on Thursday for the deadline. Uh, we're doing a video podcast. So that'll be the normal podcast that'll still release on audio. But we're going to... Um, Hopefully film it at the stage of my light and hopefully that'll that'll be pretty good. So yeah, that's that. That sums up the video today. Uh, like, subscribe, follow us on Twitter, Instagram, yeah, all that all that jazz. Um, and thanks for watching my video. And there's the the depth chart just in case you didn't see it.